어, 저희가 그동안 광고를 해왔던 북한 인권의 어머니 수잔 솔티 어, 인권 활동가를 저희가 초청을 했습니다. 어, 굉장히 어렵게 또 초대를 했고 또 어, 수잔 솔티 여사가 뭐 워낙 바쁘신 분이라 가지고 어, 저희들한테 이렇게 시간 할애를 해준 것까지 저희가 굉장히 감사하게 생각하고 있습니다. The last event of the 2022 in our great Korea group. We tried to do the big events and so finally we got you know, one person, as you know, Dr. Sujan. So she's a busy, busy schedule. She's everywhere. She's just finished in the Korea lectures and meet a, a, a lot of you know, the good people. And I uh, thank you so much, you know, the Dr. Sujan, since you know, making you know, this happen again in here. Could you make a big hand for the Dr. Sujan? Chan So she uh, connected with the, the Susan, the, Dr. Susan so long, and he made me the region all the event. Thank you so much, Chan So. 예, 그러면 어, 지금부터 저희 어, 국민주 자유주의는 어, 행사를 시작하도록 하겠습니다. 어, 먼저 개회 선언을 하겠습니다. 김강수 우리 저 어, 조지아 위원장님 나오셔서 개회 선언 부탁드리겠습니다. November 2020 in 22 to 2022 or the so many years for the North Korea human rights. Let's start with the Dr. Susan So guest the lecture. The opening prayer. The opening the remark will be the delivery by the chairman of the Georgia, Kim Kwang-su. Ah, 존경하는 시민 농부 여러분, 자유가 있는 우리에게는 소중한 인권이 있습니다. 오늘 이 자리는 북미주 자유수호 연합과 그레이트 코리아가 공동으로 북한 인권 운동가이신 수잔 솔트 여사님을 모시고 인권에 관한 강연 개최를 선언합니다. 감사합니다. Thank you, Mr. Chairman of the Congress. 국가 재창이 있겠습니다. <웃음> 애국가 재창은 1절까지 만들었습니다. 
The greetings will be delivered by the Kankiho um, leaders of the North American Freedom Protection Association.
감시 통제하고 있으며 특히 근래는 동토의 땅에서 식량난마저 심각하여 자유대한민국의 50년대 우리 고개 때보다 더 심각하다고 합니다. 그럼에도 김정은은 기아에 흐르고 있는 북한 주민들의 생활에는 아랑곳하지 않고 김일성의 유일 독재 지배체제를 유지하기 위해서 핵개발에만 모든 경제를 쳐다보고 있으며 주민들의 눈과 귀를 가리기 위해 언론의 자유, 어, 거주의 자유, 참정권마저도 억압하고 주민들은 생존권마저도 보장받지 못하고 있는 실정입니다. 이렇게 세계에서 유일하게 억압받고 있는 북한 주민들의 인권을 곧바로 해결하기란 그리 쉽지는 않습니다. 그러나 북한 주민들도 우리들의 동족이기에 그들이 자유로운 삶을 보장하기 위해서 자유민주의 가치 위에서 자유민주 평화 통일을 이루어 우리와 함께 자유를 만끽하며 살아갈 수 있도록 반드시 해결해야 할 과제라고 생각합니다. 예, 다음은 애틀란타 강인의 어, 이용기 회장님이 오늘 참석하셨는데 갑자기 어, 사업장에서 사고가 발생해서 어, 이 자리를 좀 떠나시고 대신 이경성 이사장님께서 어, 축사를 대신하겠습니다. The next, the c o m m e t r o v e r speech will be delivered by uh, Chairman of the Korean American Association in Great Atlanta, 이경성. 여러분 안녕하십니까 저는 35대 체험맨 이경성입니다 감사합니다 이렇게 아틀라나를 여러분 방문해 주셔서 수잔솔트의 초청 강연해 오신 여러분께 우선 심심한 감사의 말씀을 올려드립니다 한국 사회의 어려움과 인권 중심의 공정과 상식에서 양반들은 한반도에서 이제 모두 하나가 되어 각자의 역할과 책임을 충실히 이행함으로써 우리가 기대하는 통일과 더불어 북미주 자유수호연합회의 감사의 말씀을 또 올려드립니다. 이 행사로 해서 온갖 열정으로 헌신하시는 여러분에게도 우루의 말씀을 드리며 헌신과 사랑으로 자랑스러운 코리안 아메리칸으로서 자부심을 갖고 하나된 미래 한국인의 정체성과 근기를 모아 승리하기를 소망합니다. 여러분 가정과 모든 하신 후에 우리 자유수능 위해서 또 헌신하시는 자유를 위해서 자유를 못 받쳐 헌신하신 여러분께 다시 한번 감사의 말씀드리고 아틀란 나오신 것을 진심으로 환영합니다. 감사합니다. Thank you so much, Mr. Lee. 예, 다음은 어, 기네텍 어, 부학장이신 멜번 에버슨 씨를 소개하겠습니다. 인권에 많은 관심을 갖고 계시다고 말씀하시네요. The next speech will be delivered by the Melvin Everson. is the vice president of the Buena Technology College and also his former state representative, the house representative. Good evening. As stated earlier, Melvin Everson, former member of the Georgia House of Representatives, former appointee of Governor Deal, where I led the Georgia Commission of Human uh, Employment. And we entertain delegations from all over the United States coming to Georgia to talk to us about human rights and what it, how important it is for us to ascribe to those five basic principles, principles of human rights. And that is the right to liberty, freedom from slavery and torture, freedom of opinion uh, and expression, the right to work and education, and the right to have freedom of religion. And I can tell you, having entertained delegations from Sri Lanka, Korea, South Africa, and all across the United States and all across the globe, I can tell you how important it is for everyone to be treated with dignity and respect. And I want to thank you for the efforts you've done. Uh, 정명훈 회장은 뭐꼭 미주 청년 회장으로 참석하기보다는 제가 설명을 드렸더니 우리 수잔 솔티 여사하고 10여 년 넘게 같이 인권 운동을 하셨대요. 그래서 잘 아시기 때문에 친분도 있고 해서 오늘 달라스에서 오셔가지고 지금 이제 지금 막 도착을 해서 
The 29th president of the Korean American Association in the United States will be doing it for you. Um, she is to have a several years relationship with Dr. Sujin, and that is she going to introduce Dr. Sujin. So, thank you. 진심으로 반갑습니다. 제 29대 미주 한일의 총연합회 정명훈 인사드립니다. 저는 조지아에 예전에도 왔었고 해서 정말 반가운 분들 많이 보니까 정말 기쁘고 즐겁습니다. 이번 땡스기빙도 좋은 시간 보내시고요. 어, 이번에 좀 영어로 스피치를 해달라 그래가지고 제가 영문으로 하겠습니다. I am very delighted to see you, Suzanne, Dr. Suzanne Schulte. She has been promoting North Korean human rights for more than two decades. And she traveled to South Korea every year. So she has already celebrated 19 NKFW in, NKFW in South Korea in October. So her passion is to bring the North Korean human rights that who are suffering there with the, where they have no respect for their human lives and they are going through all this hunger and also they have no right to speak for their freedom and so many are um, oppressed and she has passion that someday South Korea, uh, North Korea will be one country and it find a peaceful resolution. And during the Moon's administration of their sunshine <laughs> policy, that a lot of them got stopped. However, we have great hope because we have UN administration. So due to that UN's administration, we find the hope so I want everyone to join together that how significant and important this North Korean human rights because they have to be protected and they have their own rights to contribute to all these North Korean defectors to come to the United States or to South Korea. So we must welcome them with warm hands that way that they can find the place here. And also someday that we need to all pray together that this must be stopped once for all. The third generation curse, Kim Jong-in and uh, Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-un, as you can see in the Bible, that the generation curse is stopped by the third generation. So next year is the seventh year of the Americans where they sign. So hopefully that something miracle will happen in our country that we will be one together one day. So Suzanne, I'm really proud that you've been doing this and your seed was planted like a mustard seed. But one day it will move the mountain and one day South Korea and North Korea were united and become a very powerful country to bring the peace to this world. So everyone join together for that prayer. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, 다음은 드디어 귀중한 시간입니다. 우리 저 인권 운동가 북한의 어머니이신 수전 솔티 여사의 강연이 있겠습니다. 어, 앞으로 나오시는 동안 우리 저 어, 박정희 위원장께서 잠깐 우리 수전 솔티 여사에 대한 프로포즈를 소개하겠습니다. I'm honored to introduce you, Dr. Susan. Could you come on the stage? Um, Dr. Susan Solte is the American human rights activist. She is the president of the Defense Forum Foundation. She's also the vice uh, co-chair of the U.S. Commit for the Human Rights in the North Korea and the Chairman of the Free North Korea Radio. She has um, received many awards, including the Seoul uh, Peace Prize in the 2008 and the, the Walter J Judge Freedom Award in the 2010 and all of the diplomatic service, Merit, Sunni, 
uh, Mera from the Republic of the Korea in 2013. Sanders Peace and the Social Justice Award in 2014, and the Volunteer Service Gold Award from the President of the United States in 2014. So many, so many in you know, a contribute for the uh, South Korea and the North Korea. And and finally, we're going to be having a lecture for tonight. Thank you so much. Stage is yours. Thank you so much to President Kim Jong-un and the North, North America Korean Freedom Keeping League, I love that name, for inviting me to be the keynote speaker today. I have a lot to share, but we'll keep to 30 minutes so we have time for any questions. My plan is to address three main things to answer the question, what should be done regarding North Korea and peaceful unification? the North Korean human rights crisis overall, important changes that have happened internally in North Korea, and most important, what we should be doing in response. Today, we have an ongoing global conflict that's intensifying all over the world over the value of human life. On one side, you have people who believe that we are born with God-given rights, that each life has value and meaning, in fact, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. On the other side of this global battle, you have people who have no regard for human life. They see human life as something meant to serve an ideology, a regime, or even as a person. There's no dignity or worth in mankind, and most assuredly no dignity or worth in womankind or childhood. Whether it's communism or Kim jong Illism, there's a common theme. Individual life has little value or meaning. North Korean women have told me that their value in North Korea was the equivalent value of a fly. The Korean Peninsula is a vivid illustration of this worldwide conflict, with the people of South Korea living in a vibrant liberal democracy that has become the 11th largest economy in the world and North Korea, often called the world's biggest prison, a place where people are enslaved and isolated by a dictator who, who is their god. You know that North Korea is the only country in the world where their citizens do not enjoy a single human right, as enshrined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It's a tragic irony that this document was passed in 1948 by the UN in reaction to the atrocities committed by Nazi Germany and Imperial Japan during World War II. 1948 is also the year grandfather Kim Il-sung came to power to ensure that North Koreans would not enjoy a single one of these human rights. We have seen the death and devastation that has meant, that has meant for Koreans born north of the DMZ. For decades, Many have tried to focus attention on the horrible political prison camps where even children are imprisoned. The slave laborers in Russia, China, and other nations, the trafficking and exploitation of North Korean women, and the everyday horrendous conditions North Koreans have lived under because of the triple kin failing dictatorship. Yet it took the bravery of over 35,000 North Koreans to escape to tell their stories <coughs> that finally led to the full awareness of the horrors occurring there. Based on their testimonies, even the United Nations in their North Korea inquiry had to conclude in February 2014 that the Kim regime in North Korea was committing unspeakable atrocities and crimes against humanity. That the gravity, scale, and nature of these violations reveal a state that does not have any parallel in the contemporary world. When the full scale of the atrocities committed by Nazi Germany against the Jewish people were realized, the international community vowed never again would the world stand by. I often wear this Holocaust remembrance pin as a reminder that for North Koreans, the words never again ring hollow because it is happening again. Tragically, for decades, our governments have emphasized the nuclear threat from North Korea and not the horrific human rights violations. This has been a huge and deadly mistake. 
It has taken the human rights movement 25 years to finally put human rights at the forefront. The mistake made about focusing on the nuclear issue and ignoring the human rights tragedy was twofold. Our government held to the false belief that North Koreans would give up their nuclear program. That was never possible. Hwang John Yang, the highest ranking defector from North Korea, repeatedly warned us starting in 1997 when he defected. North Korea will use negotiations to extract concessions, but they will never give up their nuclear program. Human rights is the issue. It is their Achilles heel. That is what the highest ranking North Korea factor kept telling us. And hundreds more since have said the same thing. Secondly, focusing on the nuclear issue fed into the North Korea regime's narrative that the regime used to use to justify their nuclear program. This is so important because Kim tells his people, sorry you have to go without, but I'm protecting you from those evil American Yankee imperialist wolves that occupy South Korea and want to destroy you. When we fail to raise our concerns about the suffering North Koreans endure, we feed that lie, that powerful lie. Now, what are the important changes that have happened internally in North Korea? There have been three important changes since the famine because of the people of North Korea. Markets, information, and eyewitnesses. Because of Kim Jong-un's draconian measures during COVID and Moon Jae-in's help for the regime during his administration, we have lost a lot of ground in recent years. But I want to address these changes. First, our markets, which resulted from the breakdown of the public distribution system, which was the way the regime distributed food and material goods using the elaborate Sunbun classification system of regime, regime loyalty. For example, elites may have had access to rice. The less loyal may have gotten corn. The same applied to material goods. The system made the entire population completely dependent on the regime for survival. But the system broke down completely in the 1990s which triggered the massive starvation, the arduous march. Nothing was being provided, and men still had to go to work, but did not get paid. So out of sheer desperation to feed their children, their husbands, their parents, it was the women of North Korea that changed everything. They became capitalists. They started trading and selling in their communities, and this led to an explosion of private markets throughout North Korea to such an extent that the majority of the population now survives on their own through these markets. Through their own self-determination, North Koreans became cap capitalists and free marketers. Attempt after attempt by the regime to shut down these markets and then to, to try to control these markets repeatedly failed. In December 2009, the regime tried to shut down the growing middle class by a currency devaluation, by issuing new currency, and essentially, essentially wiping out everyone's savings. The regime was attempting to reassert control, but there was such an overwhelming hostile reaction from the people, Kim Jong-il, the dictator at the time, had to back down. The regime blamed it all on an official named Park Nam-gil, had been executed, apologized, and moved on. This was an amazing turn of events. North Korean women pushing back against the regime, the regime not only apologizing, but officially acknowledging their own failure and letting the market system continue. A CSIS study from a few years ago found at least 436 officially sanctioned markets located across the country. And in a micro survey project in provinces across North Korea, they found that 72% of respondents received almost all their household income from the markets. Additionally, 83% of respondents found outside goods and information to be of greater impact on their lives than decisions by the North Korea regime. Before COVID, Free North Korea Radio reported there were close to 5,000 markets all around North Korea, including micro-sized local grasshopper markets, which hop around. 
Now the regime has accepted the existence of these markets, and the elites are doing what they can to personally benefit from them. The family not only led to these private markets, but it also led to the people no longer trusting the regime. Defectors tell us that in the past, it was every citizen's strong desire to become a member of the Korean Workers' Party, the path to success in North Korea. But their goals started to change as their desire was to make money to provide for their families. Second huge change, the information explosion. Part of the ability of the regime to remain in power is its ability to isolate and brainwash its citizens. North Koreans had learned a lot about South Korea and the outside world through the abundance of South Korean soap operas and Western films that have illegally flowed into North Korea. More and more North Koreans were listening to foreign radio broadcasts, watching South Korean soap operas and Western films. They knew the regime had been lying to them. Defectors have told me that the Western film Titanic became so widely watched in North Korea that the regime felt compelled to respond. As you know, in this film, a man gives his life to save the woman he loves. This concept, to value another's life, is something revolutionary for North Koreans, as North Koreans are literally slaves who owe their undying allegiance to the dictator. North Koreans who watched that movie saw something that was foreign to them, the concept of sacrificing for another out of love, that, that human life has value. The regime had to respond to this, and through their propaganda, some brilliant North Korea propagandists came up with this response. The movie Titanic was not so much a love story, but was a depiction of the failure of capitalism because the great ship, Titanic, symbolizing capitalism, sunk on the same day of Kim Il-sung's birthday, April 15, 1912. In 2015, the Mad Max film Fury Road became very popular, which is great because it shows a female heroine bringing down a dictator. And it's North Korean females who represent the greatest number of defectors. It's estimated that until until Moon Jae-in became president of South Korea, over 60% of North Koreans were getting information beyond the regime's propaganda. The flow of information was undermining the regime's lie. It convinced the North Koreans they were the most advanced nation living in a wonderful paradise. Before the COVID pandemic and the border closure, North Koreans were secretly loving South Korean soap operas and K-pop music and we're even adopting South Korean hairstyles and using South Korean terms. There was a joke that you could that you could realize someone had been secretly watching crash landing on you if they ever mentioned fried chicken. Because the North Korean citizen may have chicken once in their lifetime on their wedding day. The thought of eating fried chicken so freely is completely alien to them, something only South Koreans can do. Now, according to a recent small survey of 50 people in North Korea and 100 recent defectors conducted secretly by Unification Media Group, 96% of respondents viewed foreign content, including Crash Land on You and Squid Game. This is despite a crackdown by the regime with the passage of the anti-reactionary thought law in December 2020, which called for hard labor to death for watching videos or singing K-pop music. There was a report of students actually being executed but for watching porn videos. But this shows you the regime was losing control of the minds of the people because of information. Something else has happened that has dramatically changed the situation, and that is the eyewitnesses. There is nothing that the regime, that Kim regime fears more than those who have escaped. It is why they go to such great lengths to silence the voices of the defectors, stopping them from escaping through China and going so far as to send assassins to South Korea to kill the most outspoken defectors. Many of the over 35,000 North Koreans who have escaped up until COVID were communicating regularly with their family members back in North Korea. But escapees in South Korea are still paying brokers to keep communicate to their loved ones in North Korea despite the risk
despite the costs. I also believe that it was the activism of the North Korean defector population during the last presidential election that gave Yoon Suk-yeol his margin of victory. They worked their hearts out because they knew what was at stake for South Korea's future, having lived under Moon's repression, which stripped them of support and deprived all Koreans of some of their civil rights. Now, what should we be doing to address all of this? First of all, prayer. It's a powerful weapon. Many people believe that the Berlin Wall came down as the result of the weekly prayer services Reverend Christian Fuhrer started as the pastor of St. Nikolai Evangelical Lutheran Church in Leipzig, Germany in 1980, when Germany was still divided between Communist East Germany and Democratic West Germany. Because Kim has set himself up as a god, Christianity is among the greatest threats to this regime, and thus North Korean Christians are the most persecuted people in the world. But we know the church is alive in North Korea, though they have to worship secretly, which makes it even more important for churches in free countries to organize prayer for North Koreans. Many churches have heeded that call. Just one example is the Esther Prayer Movement, based out of South Korea, that is mobilizing prayer all over the world. They even have a weekly prayer service at the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. every Tuesday. We must be the prayer warriors for North Koreans. Number two, save the lives of the refugees. We need to save the lives of those in immediate danger by rescuing refugees in China and other countries. We estimate right now there are 600 children, women, and men currently detained in China that we're trying to get to South Korea. Because they escaped North Korea at a time when it was more difficult than ever to get out of North Korea, these refugees are in especially grave danger if they're repatriated back to North Korea. They had to have the means to cross the border since the crackdown and border closure. In other words, they had to have the financial resources. Thus, they are North Koreans who had status or North Koreans who had family members in South Korea financing their escape. This means if they are forcibly repatriated by China back to North Korea, they face execution. It is critical for the international community to call upon China to consider that these North Koreans are citizens of South Korea under the Constitution and to ask China for humanitarian consideration. Allow them safe passage to South Korea for resettlement. Since the border is still closed, we have this window where their lives can be saved. We know of a miracle that happened in November last year with a family of four that were flown from China directly to South Korea because they prayed to God for just such a miracle. We had been advocating for that family with the Moon administration and now they are free and thriving in South Korea. Number three, never again sideline human rights. What did the administration of Moon Jae-in gain by ignoring the suffering in North Korea and ripping down the loudspeakers at the DMZ and banning balloon launches. More missile launches and nuclear tests. It's especially important now that we do not lose sight of the people of North Korea during this time of escalating threats by the Kim regime. The Korean Institute of Defense Analysis estimates that when what the Kim regime has spent on its nuclear program over the last 50 years could cover North Korea's food shortages four years. Number four, relaunch the information campaign. The information campaign was being won by the work of the North Korean defectors with the support of previous South Korean governments that believe in freedom and peaceful unification. This information campaign was so successful that by 2018, the people of North Korea were more knowledgeable than ever before about the outside world. But the Moon administration made a deal with Kim Jong-un, and at the behest of Kim Yo-jong, intentionally plunged North Korea back into darkness. Not just, shutting, not just shutting off the loudspeakers of the DMZ, but ripping them down. 
and banning the balloon launches and the red spot launches. In the closing months of the Moon administration, he was going to try to end radio broadcasting to North Korea. The loudspeakers at the DMZ reached 70% of North Korea's ground forces and 50% of their air and naval, naval forces at, as they are deployed within 100 kilometers of the DMZ. No wonder Kim Jong-un demanded that loudspeakers be taken down. The anti-leafleting law must be overturned because it violates South Korea's constitution and South Korea's international treaty obligations. Instead, we should be doing everything we can to get information into North Korea by land, by air, and by sea. We must communicate to the people of power in Pyongyang they have friends and allies in Korea and America who have one and only one desire for them, to share with them the benefits of a free people, to give them a life of hope instead of despair. Those in leadership positions in the DPRK regime wake up in the morning with only two choices in their lives, being slaves devoted to the Kim Jong-un or death and their family's death. We must communicate to North Koreans the fact that free societies with human rights thrive, and as Huang Jianya, the creator of the Juche religion, used to say that the miracle on the Han that is in South Korea can be the miracle of the Taedong River if North Koreans are free of the brutal slavery of the Kim regime. North Koreans were starting to learn why so many began escaping, not just for food, but for freedom, for a better life, to follow their dreams. We win or lose on our ability to communicate truth to people in North Korea. My foundation is, is involved in all aspects of the information campaign. We would love to have you partner with us. For example, freedom-loving Americans finance 100% of the shortwave transmission of Free North Korea Radio, which is 100% staffed by North Korean escapees. It broadcasts news, true history, and information, and the gospel to North Korea every morning and every evening. We like to boast we are sharing the news and the good news. I brought some flyers for anyone who may be interested in learning more about Free North Korea Radio. Finally, I want to show you what Kim Jong-un fears. I want to show you what he has threatened to nuke. First, this is a rice bottle. Why is Kim terrified of these rice pots? It has the word of God. The Bible is that is right there. That's what's on the left side of the rice bottle. The Bible. And Kim fears God more than anything because he set himself up as God. Rice, of course, is in that bottle. To feed starving North Korean families, Kim wants them dependent on him and living as slaves. There's flash drives. The flash drives we sent in recently contain messages from 25 members of Congress, Democrats and Republicans, sending their love and encouragement and concern for the people of North Korea. These messages have struck at the heart of the lies of the regime that tells the people of North Korea that we are their enemy. When all Americans care about is their suffering. Other flash drives have included the Bible, Korean soap operas, K-pop music, and Western movies. Medicine is also in these. Most recent rice bottles have contained aspirin, vitamins, and parasite medicine. Money, a US $1 bill. I'm not sure what the value is today, but it's still a significant amount in the market. It used to be able to feed a family of four for a week before COVID. These, there's, I don't think the picture of the, these are uh, rice bottles. This is a rice bottle launch. These are rice bottles floating in to, to, the, to North Korea. In photo three, I want to show you, the next photo three is what we sent in recently. This has got, you can see the medicines, the vitamins, the, all those flash drives you see, US $1 bills, all those flash drives, those are messages from members of the US Congress to the people of North Korea. 
Now what about, that's rice bottles, but what about balloon launches? The defectors have been sending in leaflets, letting them, letting North Koreans have access to true information about South Korea. The fact that it elected a new president, the photo four is a, one, of the, um, one of the balloon launches they did to let people know that South Korea elected a new president. The fact that Kim Jong-un murdered a lot of war beer, his uncle and his half-brother, those are things that have gone in by the blue launches. True facts about life in South Korea and how North Koreans prosper and freedom. Also money, the US $1 bill, as I mentioned, very valuable in the market. And shortwave radios. Martin Williams, one of the leading experts on information in North Korea, wrote on October 6, 2022, Shortwave and medium wave broadcast remains an important method of reaching North Koreans, even while it's disappearing elsewhere in the world. Photo 5 is the shortwave radio that we're trying to, to send in. It's a shortwave radio. It's manufactured in China and can be pulled, powered by solar, hand crank, and by batteries. We need to get more of these into North Korea because this is the most proven method for getting information to North Koreans. We just launched a project to get hundreds of these to North Korean women in China and hope to use this as a launching pad to get thousands into North Korea. The most effective tool we have is the North Korean escapees. So we need to partner with them in these methods. Again, these are just a few examples of things that we're doing right now that you can help us with, with because it's freedom-loving Americans financing the North Korean escapees projects. Americans paid 100% of the cost of the most recent balloon and the most recent rice bottle launches through our foundation. And our free North Korea radio program is the most popular radio broadcast going into North Korea based on interviews with North Koreans. And its website ranks in the top five in South Korea. We are outperforming media entities with 14 times our budget. In conclusion, I want to tell you about a Christian woman named Kathy Walters who reached out to me about a powerful dream she had. She did not know anything about North Korea, but she had this dream of praying hands coming out of the dirt. In the dream, God told her those were the martyrs of Korea who love God more than their own lives. She did not know anything about North Korea, but she went online and did a search about North Korea, and she found my contact information and reached out to me. Kathy wrote to me what God had spoken to her. Those who were martyred and killed and tortured because of their love for me are not forgotten. And although the dark powers came to cover my light, they shall be broken and moved. And the holy things the enemy tried to bury shall rise in power. People will be stunned because of sudden freedom. Sudden freedom. I truly believe that we are at that point, but we must do our part in this battle. So let's work together to save the refugees and the prisoners in North Korea. Let's support the North Koreans living in freedom to be able to reach our brothers and sisters in North Korea living in enslavement so that they will enjoy freedom soon. Freedom, God's gift to all of us. And the words I know best in Korean are Apoji Chayubakan.